Tooth development or odontogenesis is the formation of a specific number of teeth with different shapes and sizes in defined locations in the jaws involving the expression of more than 300 genes by numerous signaling molecules that regulate the sequential and reciprocal interactions between the epithelial and mesenchymal tissues through the various stages of development. Teeth begin developing in utero. The primitive mouth or stomodium appears between the third and fourth week in the embryo. The mandibular and maxillary arches are formed in the fourth week. Within this primitive oral epithelium are layers of cells or laminae that will give rise to the teeth. The teeth will be formed by the interaction of cells of the oral epithelium and the underlying mesenchyme, whose cells originate from the cranial neural crust. This shows a fetal mandibular arch that has the continuous general dental lamina that will extend to form the laminae and buds for the primary and the permanent teeth. The general lamina starts in the midline with five anterior primary tooth buds and their succedaneous permanent bud laminae and ends with three posterior non-succedaneous permanent molar buds. There are several stages of tooth development. In the initiation stage, there is an induction process of molecular signals between the oral epithelium and the underlying connective tissue resulting in the growth of the dental lamina into the connective tissue. The bud stage comprises a proliferation of the dental lamina into a rounded structure overlying an aggregation of connective tissue cells adjacent to it. The cap stage has further growth of the bud that becomes indented and covers the connective tissue that is called the dental papilla. The cells of the cap are differentiated into four layers. The bell stage has more growth of the enamel organ and it presents as a bell shape with four distinct layers. In the appositional stage there is formation of the crown by dentinogenesis and amelogenesis with the deposition of dentin protein or collagen and the enamel protein or melogenin and the beginning of calcification. Preameloblasts from the inner enamel epithelium induce the adjacent cells of the dental papilla to become odontoblasts that then produce the dentin matrix, which in turn induces the preameloblast to become ameloblasts that produce the enamel matrix. In the maturation stage, there is completion of the crown with further deposition of the enamel and dentin and completion of their calcification. At the cervical area is an extension of the inner and outer enamel epithelium, forming a bilayered root sheath that will induce the formation of the root. Root formation and eruption occur at the same time. The epithelial root sheath induces odontoblasts to form root dentin, and then it disintegrates, allowing cells from the dental sac to become cementoblasts, aligning next to the dentin and producing cementum matrix that will calcify into cementum. Cells from the dental sac also contribute to the formation of the periodontal ligament. There are three components of a forming tooth. The enamel organ arises from the oral ectoderm and the dental lamina and will form the enamel. It develops different layers in the cap and bell stages. The dental papilla arises from the ectomesenchyme. It is a condensed zone of cells beneath the enamel organ and will form the dentin and the pulp. The dental sac is a fibrous tissue from the ectomesenchyme and will form the cementum periodontal ligament, and alveolar bone. The primary mandibular central incisor is the first to develop, beginning at the end of the fifth week in utero. The box shows the area chosen for the animation.
At this stage, the three components of the tooth are present. The features of this stage are histo and morpho differentiation. Note the shape of the dental papilla resembling a mesiodistal view of the crown of the incisor and the identity of the various components. The box area will be magnified to show more cellular detail. The outer and inner enamel epithelium. The stellate reticulum and stratum intermedium. The dental sac, preodontoblast, and the dental papilla. This boxed area will be magnified to show details of dentinogenesis and amelogenesis. The enamel knot area that signals changes to begin apposition. The inner enamel epithelial cells at the future incisal edge elongate and differentiate into preameloblasts. This change induces the preodontoblasts to elongate and to differentiate into odontoblasts that produce dentin matrix or predentin. Note the elongated preameloblasts differentiated from the inner enamel epithelium and the elongated odontoblasts differentiated from preodontoblasts that produce dentin matrix. Next, the preameloblasts elongate to become ameloblasts with polarized nuclei. The basement membrane is resorbed and ameloblasts deposit enamel matrix adherent to the dentin. The ameloblasts and odontoblasts move in opposite directions. Soon after the matrices are deposited, mineralization is initiated with the deposition of hydroxyapatite crystals in both the dentin and the enamel. At this stage, amelogenesis has finished. The ameloblasts are programmed to die, thus the enamel can no longer form, whereas the dentin continues to form throughout the life of the tooth. The boxed area is magnified to show the root sheath and the process of root formation. This is the cervical loop area with the Hertwig root sheath and its extended diaphragm that will outline the root formation. The epithelial sheath cells induce odontoblasts to produce root dentin and then disintegrate, allowing dental sac cells to differentiate into cementoblasts that produce cementum. Some sheath cells may persist in the periodontal zone as epithelial rest of malice. From this point, Tooth formation continues as the tooth erupts. Eruption has completed, the tooth will become functional, completing its root end and the alignment of the periodontal ligament fibers with its alveolar bone. With function, there is attrition, which is the wear of the tooth grinding against tooth. To maintain the height of the tooth in the alveolar bone, there is further deposition of cementum at the root end. This is referred to as passive eruption. Unlike enamel, dentin and cementum can continue to form as long as there are viable cells. The periodontium and alveolar bone constantly are remodeled throughout the life of the developed tooth. What follows is an uninterrupted review of the animation on tooth development.